put yourself on mute. Yeah. Okay, Shalom Aleichem Ali Yiddish Kinder. I'm sorry I'm walking around with a shaitl. I don't have a barber. Gradai. It's hard to take a haircut. I gave my kids haircuts, so my kid gave me. I gotta get rid of the shaitl. But uh, my excuse is quarantine. It's a knap excuse, but it's a fact. Okay. Rabbi Sai. Huh? It's this. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is our third class on Viata Tatzav, and I just want to make it clear. Tomorrow, same schedule, it's like a Thursday, and Thursday I have a share in Empire Stiebel. I'm going to be on Zoom, and I'm going to be on Facebook, I'm going to be on YouTube, I'm going to be on my own website. 10 o'clock, we know the 10 to 11 will be the Shir. 11 o'clock is going to be the Fabrengen. There is a remote possibility that tomorrow's Fabrengen will actually be the Gashmi is in my home. If that happens, I have to speak to the Balabasta and I have to find out if the Bacham is interested. Then I don't know if we'll be Zooming. <laughs> if it's a live Fabrengen, it's a whole different uh, situation. Sooner or later, we. Uh, are You're we welcome. If, if it'll be live, you'll, you'll be invited. Ask me tomorrow afternoon, I'll let you know. Yes, so put yourself on mute, yeah? Sooner or later, we have to go back to to, to doing things pun him upon him. Okay, whatever that boy said, this is the third sheet on the Maim of Atta Tetzava. Ein minute. And I'll put it to you this way. Yeah, there's three things that I want to remind us of. Number one. That the Indian of Meish Rabbeinu is L'Kasher or L'Chaber as Yisrael and Meirin Tzav. Meish Rabbeinu's Indian is to tie and to connect Yid Marein Seif. That's number one. Number two. This idea of the kasher the chaber as Yisrael are made in safe. In Zayar it says, it's lozun or lefarnes as Yisrael be inyan hemuna. Meishu Rabbeinu's inyan is to provide mizoynes and parnosa for yidn and the inyan hemuna. And number three, that this doesn't only apply to Meishu Rabbeinu Agashmi, it applies also to his pashtusa, the Meishu Bechol, daughter of a daughter, to the Meishu Rabbeinu every single generation. Like it says, the lotion ain't there, she ain't by Kemoisha. Mordechai Bedeiri, Kemoisha Bedeiri, and so on. And then the Maimir, our Rebbe, quotes the Friedrich Rebbe. That first he explained, Lakasha Lechab, it's all a million stuff. Then he explained the Indian of Raya Mehemne, first of all, Raya Nehemne Shay Yisrael, and second of all, that is the Zon of the and Yisrael Binyan Emuna. And then it's Pashtus of the Mesha Bechol daughter of a daughter. In each generation, you have a Mesha Rabbeinu who's on a Shoma Yid. That's how you have to understand. He's on a Shoma Yid. I want to just say as we stam. First, meant on a Shoma Yid. So I'll say two verses. The first is the Rebbe became a Rebbe. Yeah, the Rebbe became a Rebbe. Tafshin Aleph. So one of the Inyonim, of course, which is Negei, very much by Rebbe, is Infant Pidyanis. A pan. With the Polish, you call it a kvittel. You call it a Pidyanefish, a pan. So I heard, I heard it years ago, I heard it more recently with Shinui and Nishchais, that the Rebbe, I think I even heard it from Label Groner, from Harav Label Groner, face to face, pun him upon him, but the Girsa that he told me, I don't remember. I just remember there was a, we were, he was sitting Shiva. He was sitting here for his sister by Baumgarten, and we went in, and he told me this word. The clovers are richtig word. The pratiest is different. Shini in this house, that the the Rebbe said, as a free dikedar, the Rebbe said that in the last generation, do a two could take a pigeon, and again in the different gears, I heard that he said three. The Schwer and the Belzer, the free Rebbe and the Belzer of, who was still alive at that point. And a different gear say, he said, dry, that says the Schwer and the Belzer and the Gere, the Bavar Motra Gere. This is what I heard from him then. And then the Rebbe said, Ichel <laughs> I'll try. 
And the Rebbe took Pudyanus. And one thing you know about the Rebbe is that Gishpiltzach, if the Rebbe held that he's not trying to take a pigeon, he wouldn't take a pigeon. He's not going to take a pigeon because of Zayd, he told the Tate. There was no such thing, Bam Rebbe. The Rebbe took Pudyanus. Then there's a story. And I'm going to tell you the story without a name. There's a very chosh of a Yid in Lubavitch, a very, very chosh of a Yid in Lubavitch, who's a Lubavitcher, but he didn't come from a Lubavitcher home. We come to Lubavitch. So there's a shit, and everybody takes crazy. Every success story has a thousand fathers. So one of the stories that is said about Vadvir come to Lubavitch is as follows. He's a, he was a bachet learning in Yeshiv in Yerushalayim, a big masmid, and a Yerushalayim merabim. He was beteva, a moiradek a Yerushalayim, very elch. And he was looking, he was looking. So you're talking now 50, 60 years ago. You're not talking today. 50, 60 years ago, if you was a cook, there was what to search for. There were real people around. There were real tzaddikim around and so on and so forth. Then it's a given mention. So um, one of the places he used to frequent was the Belzish Dimu. It was right after the petite, after the stalkers of the battle of the Belzer, the Helica Belzer of the battle of Belzer, that the Rebbe described him, the Rebbe described him as a Tzura Belichem and Mufshet from Gashmir. And he went into his Belzer Shtib, and were out the Belzer Chassidim were fabrenging in the dead of Chassidim Belz. And what was the conversation? The conversation was about the Indian for Nemen Akritl. But in Chassidim Poland, they don't call it a Pidgin Nefesh. The Pidgin Nefesh is the money. The paper with the name, Shmei B'Shemim, is called Akvitl. In Chabad, that's called the Pidyan Nefesh. So, he went into the Belzish table, and they were talking with them in Akvitl. So he said to these elder of Belzish, see them, when I can get my Akvitl yet. It was after the, it was after the Petit, it was after the Petit, after the Salkas Helga Belzer. So they told him, as they will get my Akvitl, vested after four and maybe layam. They told him, Probably 60 years ago, 55 years ago. If you want to give a quitly, you're going to have to go overseas. In other words, in their head, there's only one address. You can write a letter, you can ask an Eita, you can even ask for a Moifis. But a Pidyanevish, that says, an Indian Fabunna mit Neshama, there's only one, one address. That's the game, maybe I am. This is what they told him. Anyway, so this is what we learned yesterday. And of course, we had a very Gishmaka conversation at the end of the class. About the Rebbe is Reish B'nei Yisrael, Nasi is Nitzutze Yishel, Yankov Avinu, the idea of Avas Yisrael and Perik Beis in Tanya, and then of course the deal of Perik Lamed Beis in Tanya, and then the deal of Dovka Beis, which is in Tanya Perik Beis. All of this was what we discussed yesterday. So we're going to continue reading inside. It's near the end of Perik Gimel, it's on page Lamed Hay. If you have my PDF, which means if you're looking at this on Facebook where this is up, um, we're near the end of Perik Gimel. Five lines, six lines at the end of the page. I'm reading inside. After the Fidi Kirabi explains Baruch that first of all there's Mesha Rabbeinu. That's Makash and Machab is all made in safe. And he's Zon and Mafan has been in Isisal Binyan Amun. And second of all, there is this Pashtusa delay. Shabakal Dara that in every generation is a Rabba Nasya Mesha Rabbeinu. It's Makash or Machab by Solomon made in Sof. And he's on, no more fun as it's all been in a moon. Machas, no more moon, the Yisrael strengthened the Yiddish moon. And like we explained yesterday, a moon is a truly Meresha moon. A moon we have from Avram Avinu. But the Pneumius of a moon, this is Mesha Rabbein. Mevaya, the Friedrich Rebbe, immediately moves to another subject. And what is this subject? Diok Loshen of the nuance in the expression of the Pasuk. Why does it say Shemen Lamoy Shemen? We call it Shemen Zayezach Kosis Lamoy. The olive oil has to be pure, Kosis. You smash the olive, you don't put it into a Teichin, you don't put it into a grinder, you just hit it with a hammer. Lamoy to be a source for life, light. So the Kasha is Lamoy Vilei Lahoy. Lamoy means for the source of light, Vilei Lahoy, and not to be light itself. So the kasha is it's the same kasha we had in the beginning of the mind. Why does it say shemen lamoyes? Shemen zayezach kosis lamoyes. It should say shemen zayezach kosis lahoyes. And the tenet is 
Shabbat Nagos, when times of Golos, Shekalach, Al Vech of the Nishbunit, Yavid was broken and crushed. Kasis. Ayadei Zemagim, through this Yidin reach, through this Yidin touch, La Moe, the source. And the Rebbe says, and say, Graim Ha'etz. And let's say that Etzim means Yechida. Let's say Etzim means Yechida. Shabbat Nagos, so the Taich, Kasis, La Moe, the money Yid is crushed, he's Megala, the Yechida Shabbanefish, which is the source of the light of the Nisham. And that's the Diok. Kasis la moed, vavos kasis la moed, and kasis la hoed. That when a yid is crushed, he's megala yechida. Now, what's wrong with this? If a maimer, it talks first of all about Mesha Rabbein. Then it talks about it's pashtus of the Mesha bechol daughter of a daughter. That makes sense. And then it talks about kasis la moed. What's wrong with this seder is that it's almost like the Rebbe gives and takes away. He starts off talking about one person, Mesha Rabbein. He continues talking about Meshach Rabbeinu in every generation, which is many people. And right away, he takes it back. He says, no, 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 no. Only if one goes. I don't understand. What's the hemshech of the apirish because it's lamar, the idea that only when you have tzadus and you megali yechida, or you have shaychas to Meshach Rabbeinu, la mavor about maimed lifnei zeh, to what it says earlier in the maimed, she Meshach, and the radiation of Meisha Rabbein in every subsequent generation after him is Zon Umefan Eze Samuna provides Mezenes and Panasa to Yiddish Shemuna Shatia Bepnimis it should be revealed. In other words, it's a klutz kash. It's a simple kash. Is Va'at HaTetzave every generation? Is Va'at HaTetzave only Meisha Rabbein? Or is Va'at HaTetzave only generations of Shmat? Chos Eslamor. Now understand. That if you're going to say that Va'ata Tetzava only applies to Kostas Lamar, you know who it, it who precludes. You know who it doesn't include. Meish Rabbeinu himself. Because Meish Rabbeinu, once he left Mitzrayim, did not have Kostas Lamar. So the Rebbe says the Maimir, the Seder of the Maimir, is like you give and you take away. You start off with one Meish Rabbeinu. You follow up by every Meish Rabbeinu. And then you take it back, only Kostas Lamar. And the Rebbe's Kashe is Ech Vashtenisht. Why would the Friedrich Rebbe do this? You speak a Seder and a Maimir. Point one, Meisha Rabbeinu. Point two is Pashtus of the Meisha Bechol Dara Vedara. Point three, only Meisha Rabbeinu Mishas Tashmad. What are the rest of Meisha Rabbeinu? They're not Shaykhs to it. That's the Kash. That's the Kash. Now, the boy said, I want to tell you something. I don't like to make things confusing. I like to make things clear. Clear. Okay? So I'm going to tell you the answer right now. I'm cheating. I'm going to tell you the answer right now. The answer is going to be that there's two things. One thing is called Kosis La Moe, and that does not apply to every Meisha Rabbeinu. And the other is Moir, without Kosis. And that is Shaykhist every Meisha Rabbeinu. That's going to be the Teretz. That's going to be the Teretz. Right? The Kasha is, you start off with one Meisha Rabbeinu, and you continue with the Pashtus of the Meisha Pardon me. And then you follow that up with saying, Kasis Lamar, they're only in the datas of Shmad. So which is it? Is it in every dot or only datas of Shmad? The answer is Lamar is in every dot. Kasis Lamar, when the Lamar is in a very special life and is only in datas of Shmad. Now the way the Maimon is going to go is that in order to accommodate this idea, that in every generation you have Moir. But only in certain generations you, get, you have Kosas La Moir. The Rebbe is going to accomplish this by teaching us a Chiddush Godel, which the Chiddush does not say in the Maimon from Friedrich and Rebbe, and certainly not in the Maimon before, that a Rebbe doesn't have one task, a Rebbe has two. There's Ikir in Yenai Mehemna. Uh, I'll tell you where it is. It's in Pedic Vav. There's Ikir in Yenai Mehemna and there's Tetzos in Yenai Mehemna. Ikir in Yenai Mehemne is Moir. Tetzos in Yenai Mehemne could be many things. One of them is Kasas Lama. So I push it, told you the answer. I didn't explain the answer. But I told you what's going to happen. The Rebbe has a question. Does Kasas Lama preclude all the Rebbe's do not live in Deide Sashmad? The answer is no. Kasas precludes all G'deli Yisrael, all Rashi Yafa Yisrael, all Rebbe's that don't live in Deir Sashmat. But more is for every dog. And as you'll see later, I mean, we're going to learn it inside. I just gave you the answer because I'd rather you have clarity 
then uh, me enjoy suspense. Okay? So this, we have a kasha. Again, I told you what's going to be the tenet. You'll see the tenet of Mitzvah Hashem in the next shiur or in the next couple of shiur. But let's go back to what we're holding. We start off with one Meisha Rabbeinu. We follow up with every Meisha Rabbeinu. And the Kosas Lamar seems to again disinclude a roiv of Meisha Rabbeinus who did not exist in Deir Sashmat. So which is it? Is it every Meisha Rabbeinu or is it only a Meisha Rabbeinu in Deir Sashmat? Peirik Dal, Vihine. Now the way I teach this, and McKenveg and the Ruf Klen, the way I teach this Peirik Dal is that it's called a Havamina Teretz. The Rebbe is going to give a Teretz, and he's going to explain it by Riches. At the very end of the Peirik, which is in the bottom of page Lamed Vav, he's going to slug it up. He's going to say, eh, nish Teretz. So what's going to end up happening today is, we have a Kasha, we're going to give a Teretz, we're going to refute this Teretz, and we're going to come back to the Kasha, and that's what's going to remain. Now, when we finish today's shir, we'll be holding exactly what we're holding right now. Is the Indian of Meisha Rabbeinu Zon Umafanas and Sol Binyan Emuna Lekasher or Lechai Beis Sol Emedin Seif? Does it only apply in Deiris of Shmad Kasas Lamayir, or does it apply in every generation? So now let's learn what's this Hava Mina Teretz. Bechlal Chasidus is not in the habit of giving up the roots and slugging them up, even though you have that in some cases. But this is one of those examples. When it says in the in the Maimer, the post of Yata Tetzave, Bob Ha Maimer comes in the Maimer of Fiyerik Rebbe. Behem Shech Lamavur, but Chilas Ha Maimer. The Kajons was written in the beginning of the Maimer. The Yata Tetzave in the Maimer of the Fiyerik Rebbe is paid a gimel. It says Lahav and Zayish Hagim Chilam Mashikos of Yata Tetzave. And I already told you that the Fiyerik Rebbe's Maimer from Pesach, nineteen twenty-seven is based on the Rebbe Rashab's Maimir from Ayin Tess. Last year was a hundred years since the Rebbe Rashab said that Maimir. Now it was a hundred and one years. The fish pay, yeah? So the Rebbe Rashab said the Maimir about the Tetzave. And in the middle of the Maimir, he went off to talk about Purim, the Kibbal Ayyudim. The Fidik Rebbe changed the Seder of the Maimir. He started off the Maimir with Purim, and in the middle he went to the Tetzave. So whether you start off with the Tetzave and you go to Purim, or you start off with Purim and you go to the Tetzave, there is the Indian of Purim also, not just Vata the Tzav. Vashtet in Anei B'mayim be the Pid is Riki Balehud and Mesesh Adachel Alasi. That Yidin accepted, they reaffirmed, they committed themselves again to this that Hechel Alasi they had started to doing. Who means Shekibu? They accepted upon themselves. Ma Shechelu that they accepted initially. Bazman Matan Tehid and Tanda Tehid was given. Rabbi said, I want to just say something. Derech Agav. There's two psukim. One pasuk is kibu v'kibla yehudim aleim v'alzadim al kol anil v'maleim that v'le yaver. Yeah. And other pasuk is v'kibla la yehudim. On the pasuk kibu v'kiblu, there's a gemara that kibu much a kiblu kfar. For the life of me, I don't know why. Not in all the maimorim. You have in Tere Er, you have a maimor kibu v'kiblu, but in many of the maimorim of the rabbeim, they dafke quote that pasuk that the gemara doesn't go. Instead of quoting the pasuk kibu v'kiblu. Which the Gemara says, Kibu Masha Kibu Lukfar, they quote the Pasuk of Kibu Lehudim and Sesher Echel Lassis. And God, I think I saw once from the Rebbe a reason why they bring this Pasuk and not this Pasuk, but at the moment I don't remember that the Yidden accepted what they started to accept at Matante. And the Rebbe explains what this means. The Matante, the Hoysa has Cholo, and the Abish gave us a Tater, it was only a beginning. Hechel Lassis. And the beginning means it was incomplete. In times of Achashvedish, during the decree of Haman, Isaac Abaldu was the final affirmation, the key and the final acceptance, and it's considered greater than the first. So the Pshat and the Pasuk, the Kibbalah Yehudim, is that Yidin started taking the Tater at Har Sinai, they didn't finish taking the state until the story of Put. Like the Pasuk, the Kibbalah Yehudim, the Kibbalah Yehudim, bracket, Val Derech Maimir Azal, like it says in the Gemara on the Pasuk. Kim of a kibul of Hayyud and the Yidden reaffirmed and accepted. Kim of Masha Kibul of Kfar, they reaffirmed what they had accepted before. Okay, so there's a say, just like in the other Pasuk. The Gemara explains Kim of Masha Kibul of In this Pasuk, even though the Gemara doesn't say anything, the Gemara means the same thing. The Pasuk means the same thing. When Yidden and Har Sinai said, Nasa Venishma the first time was only a beginning. They finalized, they affirmed, they completed their commitment 
to Masha Kiblu what they accepted the first time. So Matantei is considered the beginning. And it's not complete until the story you put it. Of course, and you, of course you all know the word. In, there's Kama Pratam to this word, but one of them, of course, is that by Har Sinai, the Loshan from the Gemara is, Kofa Lehim Har Kigigis. Hashem raises up Har Sinai, he dangles it over the Yidin's head, and he tells them, Im Kablu as Teirasi Mut, if you accept the Teiri as good, Vim Lav, otherwise, Echser as Eilam, I'm going to destroy the whole world. As it says in the Gemara. So this is a Gemara in Megillah, it's not a Gemara in Shabbos, I think. So the Gemara says, Mikan Meidah Rabbi Leirais. Meidah, Meidah means a disclaimer. It's an, it's a, it's an Aramaic word, Meidah, it's a halachic Meidah. The concept of Mesiris Meidah is, if you have a din with another guy, the other guy's a bully and a rosha and a politician and a dreko, and you can't take him to Bezdin because the Bezdin is afraid of him. So you call in to aid him privately, and you may say Meidah, you say, this, I'm going to take him to Bezdin for this and this reason, and when I'll be strong, I'll take him to best. If you may say in front of these two Adim, and you could bring those two Adim, then later you can do a lot of things that you would not be able to do otherwise. Because Mesiras Madah means you're you're checking in and saying, as they say in America, INF, INMF, it's not my fault. I can't take him to Dentator today, but I'm telling you that I'm going to do it tomorrow. So Mesiras Madah is called a disclaimer. So the Gemara says, as Medor Abba from the time Hashem gave us this, the, the Tater. Until the Purim story, which is a little bit less than a thousand years. You didn't have a Maidah Rabbi. They could say, you have Titus, why I'm not through? You forced me. My choice was to accept the Tera or be underneath a mountain. So I took the Tera. Until Purim. Purim that goes away. Because Purim, there was the Kim of a Kiblu, Kim of a Kiblu Kvar, or a Kiblu Yehudim of a Kiblu Lasseis, that the mountain Tera was only a beginning and Purim was the end. And the Rebbe now explains himself. By my mother, that I have to ask a question of the master of the head of the pelt doesn't make any sense. Matan Tate, oh, you're so with Aha, see the one Hashem gave us the Tate and Har Sin in the year 2448. Yidden were the highest imaginable levels. For all yours, Etzlam Gil, of course, the Jewish people personally experienced a great revelation of godliness. Bedar Gahi, now it's the highest level. The nays of Azen not only was it true. Shagam Kedem Matan Tera Yilim Nailim Biyesin before the Abish that gave us the Ted who had many great revelations, the revelation of of Makas Bechedas, the revelation of Itzias Mitzrayim, the revelation of Kriyas Yamsov, the relationship, the relation of um, the revelation of uh, Beis Ksarim, and of Matan Tera, and then of course Matan Tera itself. Hagil or Shayev Yisrael Mitzrayim or Befrat, but Kriyas Yamsuf. So they were more than the Kigiluim when the Eibush took Yidden out of Mitzrayim. And of course, understand that the ultimate example of this Gilu was the Sarah the Dippers themselves. It's one of the most interesting stories in the Chumash that Hashem tells Meishar Abenu, Hine and Echi Boy Lecha Ba'av Ha'Ona. Which means, I am going to come to you in a cloud and I'm going to talk to you. You're not going to hear what I'm saying. But they're going to be aided. They're going to be witnesses that I'm talking to you. And as a result of this, you're not going to believe in the Navi. When Moshe Rabbeinu told us to the Yidin, the Yidin said, no, they're not agreeing. If they're doing business with the Ebesh, the Ebesh is going to have to talk to them directly. No Mamut. The famous words that it's a Lides Es Malkein. If we're committing to be Yidin and to keep the Tater and Mitzvah, Hashem is going to have to negotiate with us. So Meshe thought it was a great idea. Like we had in last week's Pasha. Mi Yitain kol am Hashem Nevi'a. Meshe would have loved if every single Yid was another. So he comes back to the Eibishter and tells the Eibishter that the Yidin want that Hashem should speak to them directly, no sarser, no arbitrator. And the Eibishter said, okay. To become a Novi takes a lifetime. They were given 48 hours. Let me say that one more time, okay? To become a Navi takes a lifetime. They will give him 48 hours. So what do you think happened? <laughs> they became Nevi'im. And they plotted. Because they were not ready for it. But it wasn't the Pshat that because they weren't ready for it, the Abishu didn't give it to them. The Abishu gave them something that they couldn't handle. They were, You want to speak to me? Speak. I just say, even for the Shema, some new technical difficulties. But the Abishu came to meet Yidin directly. Nevertheless, says the Rebbe, Hine, Hagilui Shahoya Bishas Matan Teda, when the Abish finally gave us the Teda, Hagilui Naila Bi Yesa was even a higher revelation. 
then you see, then you then the Yisra Makis, then Makis Bechiris, then you see as Mitzrayim and Kriyas Yamsov and all the rest. Zok Tober the Rebbe. On the other hand, the Mei Achashveresh in times of Achashveresh, how you saw the Tachas Ayyidin when the lowest Madrigas, right? One of the worst moments in Jewish history was the story of Purim, and of course you all know why. It's not just that Purim was a Zman Agolus. Purim was a Golus where there was no place to run and hide. You know, one of the Maimon, the three that Rebbe said about Rebbe is Chassan. It's Omer Rabbi Yishe, Gemara, Omer Rabbi Yishe. My dixiv tzitkas pizreine Yisro, or pizreine Yisro. Stoka, also HaKadosh Baruch Hu be Yisro, she pizre on the Beinu Masem. Maybe it's just a huge favor, spread us out. It's a Gemara. And what's the pshat in the Gemara? When one part of the Jewish people is suffering, the other part of the Jewish people could have made it achmer for them, to do mitzvahs for them, b'chayetim for them. The Purim story was the only time in the history of Golos that every Jew in the world of the Gzir has declared there was no place to run a night. No place to run a night. So if B'chlaud Golos is a bad thing, the story of Purim Golos was the worst. Right? The Nesa, first of all, Ahel, and Behesta Shabachal Golos. First of all, there's the classic idea that in Golos Hashem is hidden, the Bechal Golos, the Dugmas, Golos, and Saim, every Golos is compared to the Yaksa. Well, Kamei Shabachalos, Mitzayim, just like when we're in Golos and Mitzayim, the Pasuk tells us. The way Shamor Amesh, they couldn't listen to Mesh Rabbein and Mikhei Tzadok, and Vedekasha, they were short of breath, and they were working so hard. And they couldn't listen to Mesh Rabbein, who... Now that, also, Bechol Gauls, this wasn't only true in Mitzayim, it's true in every single Gauls. There's all kinds of tests to keep in Tehra Mitzvah. So Golos Beklau means, Golos means Hashem is hidden. Times of the base of Mikdash, the is more revealed, it's easier to see Ashkoch HaPratis, and there's some of Lubish Beteva, and all those other things. And Golos, it's Chesha. It's dark. Purim was a double and a triple darkness. Hine. Oz. Then, Bizman, Zeras Ham, in the times of the decree of Haman, Hoyahel, and Vahesre Yezek, compared to Golos, it was even darker. Why? Why? Because they were going to be killed. After became nevertheless this man, Matan Terim the Abish, gave us the Taylor originally. Shaw, you saw Batach, Asa Ilid, when the highest Madrege is. Hoysenak has called only a beginning. Hechelu, glasses, from the word Vatachilen, it's the start. O Bizman, there is Hom in the time of the decree of Homan Arosh. Kishahoy, you Batach has a shift, we went the lowest possible imaginary level, level imaginable. Only then, Kiblu Mashre Echelu Matan Ted were able to reaffirm what they accepted when the Abish gave us a Taylor Hasin. So the kasha the rabbi is, the fide can be used to the dover pele. How could Purim be greater than Matan Teda? Matan Teda was such a Masudadika world, it was so organized, it was so holy. It was Navua. Hashem came down on a mountain, spoke to all the Jews, all experienced Navua, the attack expired, well, that was what happened. What's Purim? Purim, they're going to be killed for being Jewish. Right? In the footnotes, the rabbi speaks that there's a number of madregas to the Messias Nefesh. First of all, we're going to kill them all. And especially because they were gathering children together to learn Tehid, especially as they're doing it by Rabbi. Many, many points. But the cash is how could you compare the time of Gzeras Homan, which was the worst of times, to the times of Yidman? They got the Tehid, which was the best of times. Omevaya was on the Tehid, is as follows. The Bizman, Nagazed, in the time of the decree of Homan. The Yiddish guy they did it, they were a great Messiah's Nefesh. The Nefesh was there, first of all, the first level of Messiah's Nefesh was not to deny the Abishta. Like it says in Chasidus, and the only source besides for Chasidus, this is the Pirish on, on, on Miguel Sester, from Yankee Milis. I forgot what it's called. The decree was only on Yehud and not on Yehud. When Afa became nevertheless, they also died to Machshavet Chutz Chas V'Shalom. No Jew thought of an alternative thought. No Jew considered running away. So Rabbi said, this is the first Madrega Messiris Nefesh. The Gemara says this, of course, and Chassidus Shturim this. And you have this in the Friedrich Rebbe. I just want to make an advertisement. You want to read the most intriguing Purim story ever written. Read Purim Tavshin Aleph, Purim 1941. With the Friedrich Rebbe in incredible detail tells the whole story of Purim, but it's a political power play where you see all the players and all the egos and all the clipists and so on.
What was the story? The story was that Yidin had a traditional name. The traditional name of the Jewish people is Ivri. Yeah, someone made a song. I know this is not so Hasidish, but I, I just love these. Ivri uh, Anechi. Who said that? In the Sefer Yoyne, they woke him up and he was sleeping and they say, why don't you talk into your God? And he said, Ivri Anechi, Yichdin the Meibishn. Yeah. So Yidin were called Ivri. And the meaning of the word Ivri is a foreigner, a greener. Like the Chazal say, Kol Eilam Kulei Me Eiver Echad Na Avram Avinu Me Eiver Achad. Avram Avinu is on one side and the whole world on the opposite side. Ayid is a greener. Huh? They came to Egypt, which is east of Eretz Yisrael. They said, Eh, Me Eiver Anor. He comes from the west. <laughs> they came to Eretz Yisrael and said, Ah, Me Eiver Anor. He comes from the east. Wherever a Jew goes, he's an Ivri. A Yivrei, as they say in Russian. A fremder, a foreigner. He doesn't belong here. He's not a member of our civilization. He's a Trugikomene. We're being nice to him. He's like Ivri. Jews were called Ivri throughout. Yidin came to Golos Bavl. And again, the story of Golos Bavl is a great tragedy and nobody understands it fully. No one talks about it enough. When Yidin came to Bavl, they were killed and they were tortured and they were abused. But when they came to Bavl, they were treated like the biggest Chachamim in the world. Yidin and Zman Ba'isrishan had the respect of the whole world. Because they were big Chachamim and they were big Nevainim and they were big Tahirim and they were big Kedoshim and the whole world knew it. You know, I always give the example, yeah, Avraham Avin, Nebuchadnezzar came to destroy the Beis HaMikdash twice. The first time was Golos Yechonia. He didn't destroy the Beis HaMikdash, but he plundered. What did he take? What did he take? He took Yechonia, the king. What did he take? He took the supercomputers. He took the technology. What was the technology in those days? HaChedish V'Amizgir, Poshet, the smartest people in the world. Who were the Rashi Sanhedrin, who lived in Yerushalayim, the Bukhazetsa captured them, he brought them to Bavel, like Daniel and Hananiah, and Mishal and Azari and all the rest, and he put them into his cabinet. The Yidin came to Golos Bavel, they were not treated like the dust of the earth, they were treated like the smartest people in the world. So Golos Bavel was a funny kind of Golos. Going into Golos was very bloody. But in Golos itself it was Ganski Shmak, life was good. So what happened? What happened next? I'll take a while, yes. Yidin began to assimilate Rahman Latan. They began to intermarry. That's what happened. That's why the Tanakh says, Ezra Sefer writes, Sefer Ezra, and it's a Gemara Mitzach the Kedushin. Then the way back there, it's Yisrael, Ezra realized he's schlepping a whole bunch of mums eating with him, and Chatzi Goyim, and Shnei Shlishi Goyim, and Shnei Shereveim of Goyim, and Eisen Shalim was. And Ezra HaSeif was Meyachas the Yidin. He identified the Yechas of Yidin. And the Rambam writes in Huchas Mashiach that one of the things that's going to happen when Mashiach comes after his Malchus is established and it's calm and it's quiet, he's going to establish Yechas. In Bavel, Yidin began to marry Shikses. It was cool there in Golos, but they were treated with a great respect. So the Fromakis, the radicals, the fanatics, we're very upset about this. Even if there's a Gators, because the Gators take off Kapodas and so on. So they took a new title. And the new title was Yehudi. And the Gemara says, what is the meaning of Yehudi? The meaning of Yehudi is one of the nine that I worship. This is a Gemara Mesech, the Megillah. There's a Gemara someplace else in Shast that says, If you deny idol worship, that means that automatically you admit that the whole Tera is empty. So the word Yehudi, which means Kefir Bavay denying idol worship, also simultaneously means made the Bakala Tera So you had two types of Jews in in the Malchus Achashvedish, Mehedavat Kush, Shevav Esmei Medina, Ivrim and Yehudi. No, look in Tanakh, who was he killing? Only Yehudim. So if you ask the question, in the times of Purim, Yidin had no choice, of course they had a choice. Go down to the passport office and change your passport from Yehudim to Ivri and you're off scot-free. Look down to the Rebbe Ed, lay also behem machshav chutz chas Not one Jew for one minute considered running to save himself. They were written down as Yehudim. And the Yehudim had a clear error that in the Gimel other hands is going to be an for shvich as domem rachman al and they didn't back away. 
They didn't say, I'm really an Ivrei, a Yehudi. You know, the Ivri, the, the story with the Rebbe that they tell. That the Rebbe was living in Paris, as they did tell them. And uh, he came home well, after the Nazis had come into Paris. And his landlord told him, she was a landlady, said to her, you know, they came here to register all the people. And they asked me if you're a Jew or you're a Christian or whatever it is. And I said, you're Orthodox. Orthodox could have meant the Greek Orthodox Church. Could have been a Christa, from it, an Orthodox Christian. So I saved your life. The Rebbe went down to the office of the Nazis and changed the registration to say it. Yehudi. Herst, he didn't. <laughs> the Shiks is trying to help out. Yehudi. So think about it. Haman is not killing all the Jews. He's killing the Chassidish Yidn. The Elach Yidn. The Yidnu don't assimilate, don't agree with the sheet of assimilation. That Lai Nenu, Misudot HaShleit Zerosha, Lai Yishtachavu Letzelem, and so on. And they also, Behem Machshav Eschutz, now one Jew questioned this sheet, and they're prepared to die to remain Yehudim and not to become Yehudim. That's a moidin de kamasiris nefesh. It's not for a day or two, it's for 11 months non-stop. Number two. There was also a Messiris Nefesh to fulfill Tate and Mitz. Let's look in footnote 28. This is a big Chiddush. The idea that you are Mesa Nefesh, not to become cut off from the Abish, that makes sense. But to be Makal kills but to get the Yiddish people together to learn Tate, that's not one of the things you have to be Mesa Nefesh for. And they did it anyway. And then the Rebbe continues further and he says, they gather together all the Yidden, large groups to learn Tehra with the Nefesh. And of course, we all know what the Medrash says, that Haman came to Achashvedesh and asked him, why are you so happy? And the rest is history. So the Rebbe says, in the Purim story, the Yidden who were called Yehudim, the Elch Yidden, were Mois and Nefesh beyond any limits. Unbelievable. First of all, they were Mois and Nefesh, they also were Mois and Second, Lo Mesa Nefesh, they're going to keep Tater Mitzvahs, even Haman could kill them for that. And third of all, they're going to do it in a very public way. Says the Rebbe, Veseir, some Messiris Nefesh, Alham Oysa, De Mordechai Yehudi, this Messiris Nefesh, that do it the Rebbe of their time, Eid Chaya Yehudi. Mesha Shavadere. Says the Rebbe, Vezehu, and this is the Tater, this is the Pshat and the Pazak Vikiba, like Yehudi Messa Shadachay, the last says, that he didn't accept it during the time of Purim, what they started to accept in Matan Tater. The Matan Teir Hoi Sera Kas Chol. When the Eibush gave us there was only a beginning. Over his man, they did sometimes the people have a second of the final affirmation. Yai Dei Shahoyo Lemos Mesiris Nevesh Bepeil Ab Teiro Mitzvahs because they had Mesiris Nevesh actually for Teiro Mitzvahs. Listen carefully. Nis Alu Parenthesis Beinyan Zeh End the Parenthesis. The Madrig and Nilus Yaser Mikish Moish Shahoyo Az Matan Teir. No one's gonna say that today in Golos we're holding higher than what happened in Matan Teir. But in this Prat, the Rebbe's gonna say the fact. That uh, we have Allah's Vestadium and we have Nisyoinois and so on and so forth. So in Pratacha, then one detail were better than them. Taka in the time of Mesha Rabbein and Yidn were Betacha Sashlemus Amaila. But the time of Purim, it was a very dark time and they're ready for Mesidas Nefesh. So in one aspect, they're even greater than them. For Lachain Ozdaf, Kohisak Abal, Kibala Yudim, Yidn accepted the Teda again because. Um, Because they stood ready for Messiah Snash. So what did the Rebbe just say? That Yidin, during this time of Purim, the 11 months of the Purim story, were ready for Messiah Snash, HaKiddush Hashem. And they were even ready for Messiah Snash, HaKiddush Hashem, for things they not mechoyev to be Messiah Snash for, like teaching Teir. So, Kum Techoyzot, in the parenthesis, Be'in Yen Zed, one Prat, Purim is higher than Matan Teir. So the Rebbe wants to suggest this is the Pshat. Let's read it. Maybe this is like the Pshat. The chapir is because it's lamoy de minin, because lamoy de shadei, because it's nishba venitko and yidna, crash, magiyim, lamoy yu shechidah shevenefesh. Who be it as that explains, the man, ha gazay, the dafka in time, the gazay, the dafka bo, the mesidus nefesh yidna, him to mesidus nefesh, but finale of yes, in a very high level. Ki mesidus nefesh, mesidus nefesh, which is mesad etzema nesham, shalomai le migil comes the very essence of the nesham. Mor, shemimimim to ha'ir. And this is only revealed by the Chayos Ma'at of the Kostis Nishpa Venitzi and Skalas Ma'at Shalom Boy. The Teretz is the Take Meisher Abenu is all in the final, is all in the Emun. Take 
Rees beneden het stroom in toet als je eentje zou jij een bij God deed wat deed. Is um, is zon en fijn te zal binnen hem. But to what Mordechai did, it doesn't come. Because in Indian say, in the Prat of Messias Nefesh, Mordechai reaches Yechida, and in Kvayochel, other times they couldn't reach. So the Rebbe's Matziah, this is the Tedus to the Kash. What's the link? You start off with Meshach Rabbein. You continue with the Rebbe, the Meshach Rabbein every generation. And then you speak about Kosas Lamoy. The Tedus is talking every generation the Rebbe has made and wakes up the Insham of a Yid, but not Yechida, only Chaya, not Moy. The waking up of Moy has to do with Messina's Nefesh. And that's a Tedus to the Kash. Mitzav Echad, every Rebbe, every generation. His Indian is on, all the finances is all well, being him, Munah. When it comes to the union of Yechida, it's only in the times of God. Avo. You see, Avo. In some print, it's the last word on the line. Avo, however. The Rebbe says, I just spent 40 minutes or half an hour giving you a whole shot. In Kosas Lamoyer, well, guess what? It's wrong. When you look at these secrets, the way the Maimon is written, I'm free to hear that. Shapir is because of Lamar that you explain because of Lamar after how Inyan that I am him. The first who the Meshav was a loyal shepherd. Then you explain that he's on the fence of Saul being in her mother. And then you explain his first choice of the Meshav of Chaldar of Adar. And then you explain because of Lamar and Mashmur indicates the Inyan because of Lamar, even the idea of Yechida which being associated with Kosis. Shaya Kamazah is also connected to the fact that Meshav is on the fence of Saul is that Mesha nourishes and provides a faith that should be internal. In other words, the Rebbe says, if I look at the Mamad Fili Rebbe, what I just said can't be right. Because what I just said is that Kosas Lamar is only in times of Shmad. If you look in the Mamad, you'll see that Kosas Lamar applies always. So basically, what do we do today? We asked the Kasha, we gave a Tedet, and came back to the Kasha, and the Shir is over. We learned nothing. As they say in Yeshivish, we learned nothing. The Kasha is. Is the Indian of Mesha Rabbeinu? Is Pashtusa the Mesha Bechaldor of Adora? Or is it only Kosas Lamar in times of Tzadis? We wanted to suggest that it's a little bit of both, and we went back to the beginning. Because it's Mashma in the Maimer that even Mesha Rabbeinu is holding by the Madreig of Kosas Lamar, and the Mesha didn't have any Shmat. Okay? We're going to call it a class. We're going to tomorrow at 10 o'clock. We're going to learn. Uh, Thank you all for coming and listening. Thank you very much.